signal. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll start into the presentation right away. I hope everybody can see the screen. If anybody can just give me a confirmation, that would be preferred. All right. Okay, so. All right. So red light communications, oops, sorry. Yeah, red, sorry again here, sorry folks. Red light communications was founded in 1999. We have 95 employees that are, are located in 12 different countries. We're traded on the stock exchange under the stock symbol RDL.TO. We have 70 projects. We have projects in 70 countries, rather. We have over 400,000 radios installed, and we hold 43 patents. Our markets, our primary market, what, what is energy, government, and telecom. So Red Line Communications products are focused on being powerful by providing best-in-class technology that outperforms all competitors in our, in our market space. Our products are made to be versatile so we can serve a broad set of markets and solve a variety of different problems within those markets. Most importantly, we have reliable products to ensure that there is virtually no downtime. So overall, our approach is to be a trusted partner in developing a leading edge, delivering the best total solution for our end user. Redline's market segments are energy. That's kind of where we played the most. We developed the digital oil field and basically connecting up drilling rigs, uh, all kinds of different uh, oil assets. Uh, the telecom segment we have moved into and basically for internet of, of transport, internet of things for transport, backhaul agility, and business access type services, and as well as government. In the government, we have smart cities, border protection, intelligent transportation systems, and the digital divide. The connected smart city, basically in this diagram here, is just sort of give you a, a kind of a, an idea what, what, where red line can be used. The particular, the virtual fiber, the RDL 3000, or the RDL 3100, basically becomes an infrastructure, a wireless infrastructure that connects up different assets within the city. These assets could be wastewater, they could be uh, skated devices measuring uh, utilities. It could be uh, video surveillance for, for, for security or for, for safety. It could even be for a local airport for connecting up different types of assets there or even public Wi-Fi. Redline's value propositions is basically low, lowest capital expenditure. We can deploy fewer base stations and, roll, and get further reaches off those base stations, lowering your rollout costs. Connect up to those hard to reach assets. Our MIMO A, MIMO B technology, specifically our MIMO A, can help reach those, ass, those locations that are not usually reached by traditional wireless. Lowest operating expenditure, because of the low failure uh, time of our product, we basically have a 99.99% .99 uptime, making it very, uh, very reliable system. Best application performance, a lot of times when this system's deployed, it's usually for one particular application in mind. However, because it works well, they start adding other services to that. And finally, the absolute security, state of the, of the art cybersecurity. Redline has basically two types of architectures that we sell today. The first one I'm just going to uh, touch on is our, our mobile solution, Redline's LTE. Basically, we use this, this we, we position this service or this solution for all mobile type applications. That can be uh, machine to machine, Internet of Things, uh, ITS, AMI, first responders, etc. The other arm of our technology that we sell is called the virtual fiber. It's basically a transport network and it can be used as a backhaul for LTE systems or e bees and it can also be used for video surveillance, uh, business-to-business type connection, any kind of high bandwidth applications. 
In a lot of cases, we can marry these two technologies together, providing a mobile solution and a fixed wireless high bandwidth solution in one place. On top of that, we also have software to manage these devices. We have an evolved packet core uh, called FlexCore for our, e, our, our Redline LTE, and we use another application called Clearview to, to manage our RDL 3000 or 3100 product line. Smart City projects, and this is really where this presentation is uh, for you guys, a lot of people are in the smart city business or specifically traffic um, traffic management. But you can see in smart cities, we have several different applications that we, we try to, that we tap into. Public utilities, obviously connecting up their assets. Smart grids, typically used as backhauls for their system to connect for those hard reaching systems. Public venues, so that would be a public Wi-Fi type application. Uh, rule 4G or digital divide expanding the reach of 4G systems or providing internet services where traditional um, wireless systems cannot um, operate well. Public security and safety, very big because of our high security features. First responders, we have, we have types of uh, radios that can be can self-aligned for rapid type deployment systems. The intelligent traffic system, transportation system, obviously for automated toll booths, road sensors, intelligent signage, video surveillance, mm -hmm. and traffic light. And finally, rapid deployment networks, basic for emergency services. So um, our virtual fiber delivers extreme data performance to multiple remote sites over a very wide areas and rugged terrain. And we have different kinds of form factors that suit those needs. And we have uh, fixed access in integrated radios, and we have these nomadic radios that can self-align. Basically, we these RDL 3000 and 3100 radios can operate from 450 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz. Redline's unique capabilities from the virtual fiber perspective is range and coverage. You can get to those hard to reach areas, and specifically because of MIMO A, reliable and consistent. Uh, very dependable systems, very low failure rate, quick and low capital expenditure. The integrated solution helps with fast deployments, tuned for small packet applications such as Internet of Things, extreme data speeds, ideal for video surveillance or any kind of high bandwidth applications, and then again, high security, state-of-the-art cryptography. On the LTE side, it's basically site versus performance. Our macro base stations transmit high power in a, in a small light form factor. You don't need very large towers for these type of ENOBs. They're, in, they're hardened, so they're ideal for industrial solutions. Low power consumption. So you can put them in areas where you don't have, you have to run them off power systems that don't have enough power for traditional LTE systems. We can operate in hazardous locations, and we're ideal for small to medium LTE, LTE type deployments. Specifically, we look for private LTE for industrial. So on the virtual fiber, or the RDL 3000, what's really under the hood, what's most interesting about this product line is our, these th three uh, purple boxes. We basically own all of this. A lot of our competitors do what we call a system on a chip. So they buy the our circuitry from another vendor and then build it around, build a box around that. We don't. We actually own everything about it. That allows us to give to build very linear transmitters, very good receivers, build high processing power type radios, and basically build to applications that are, that are required by our customer base. So our core technology advantages. As I mentioned before, uh, lower deployment cost, so we, deployment cost, uh, greater range and capacity, small antennas uh, bit, uh, that can be used, uh, reliable and consistent data uh, application um, support, and app in multiple applications on one data network. So this slide here sort of gives you an idea of our Redline's product portfolio. 
uh, we have basically two major lines. We have an industrial line and a commercial line. The industrial line really it just means it's ruggedized. The radios in both the, both the industrial and commercial are basically the same, except the enclosures on the industrialized are heavier duty. They can take more extreme type um, environments. So we have our base station. Um, for our RDF 3000, it's called the Ellipse, and then we have our E-node Bs for LTE. Then we have different form factors. We have the, the what we call the Connect OW and the Connect OWS, basically for, for industrial type of deployments for fixed access. And we also have a secure version of that for industrial, I'm sorry, for military applications. Then we have nomadic uh, form factors. These are self-aligned systems basically allow for um, end users to move their assets and allow the radio to align itself. They don't have to, they don't understand radio. They don't need to worry about it. All they need to do is turn it on and it will connect up, it will connect itself up. And then finally, we've also been testing lots of um, user equipment for LTE. We are developing some high power LTE systems and these are sort of in development here. Plus we use other vendors LTE systems or LTE user equipment because the LTE for Redline is a standard LTE. On the commercial side, which is where a lot of times this is where the in the city application gets used, is we have still have the same base stations we had in the industrial, but the form factors are called the enterprise line. We have two integrated versions, and then we have a non-integrated version for those larger antennas. We provide accessories. We sell accessories for both product lines, or both, uh, both the industrial and commercial arms. And we also have software for the uh, Clearview to manage the RDL 3000 and 3100 and the Evolve Packet Core for the LTE um, solution. So the frequencies for the virtual fiber I mentioned before, 470 megahertz to 5.8 gigahertz. Now that is different. Each one of these frequency bands I'm mentioning here would be different hardware, uh, different hardware SKUs. But those details can be discussed later if there's interest. On the LTE side, we do 3G PP uh, band classes. Effectively, we operate right now in the 700 megahertz band, 12 bands 12, 13, 14, 17, and 28, as well as band 4, which is 1.7 gig, and band 7, which is 2.6 gig. The enterprise, um, these are the CPE devices. There, we have the the standard enterprise CPE, and then we have what we call the CP-XR, XR standing for extended range. And finally, we have a non-integrated version called the CP-RF, effectively used higher gain antennas for those longer reaches. The interesting thing is this form factor, the only difference between this and the industrial is that the, the, the package is not as ruggedized, ingress protection 67 versus ingress protection 68. But what it includes is the, the integrated units, an integrated antenna, AES-256 security, mounting hardware kit, and the PORE power injector. It's all included with the, with the kit. What's addition, what needs to be a purchase additional is obviously the Ethernet cables and the option keys. Because of the integrated solution, install, you can install the system very quickly, basically in minutes reducing the install time from 25 to 50%. This helps with the capital expenditure of rolling out the network. The intelligent transportation system network components basically could be used for applications such as road sensors, video surveillance, as I mentioned before, adaptive traffic light management, signage, on-ramp on roof uh, flow control, white wipe or hot spots, and traffic light control. For uh, we, our rapid alignment system, this can be ideal for traffic, um, traffic um, speed monitoring systems such as this. This is so that the end user can move the asset around and, it does, and the system will align itself. This also could be used for any kind of rapid deployment system for the police or even the fire department. Our Connect OWS uh, series basically is ideal for connecting up serial devices. One thing about it is the, is the uh, serial gateway has two Ethernet ports and two serial ports. And because of that, 
uh, with when you do the deployment, a lot of times you need the terminal server and an Ethernet switch. With our with it with our serial gateway, we can simplify the deployment, reducing some of the equipment in the in cabinet in the cabinet. Wastewater applications, wet water or wastewater applications, basically an infrastructure for connecting, connecting up those assets. For public safety field equipment, usually it's typically video surveillance type systems. Again, our product is ideal for video surveillance. And Wi-Fi backhaul for public systems, perfect for that type of application as well. A lot of times the RDL 3000 system or 3100 system when it gets deployed, it carries more than one application. It could carry the Wi-Fi backhaul. It could also carry the video surveillance as well. On smart utilities, basic backhaul, connecting up substations could be possibly used for machine to machine type connectivity for SCADA type systems, or again, high resolution video for specifically for monitoring for safety or security. Ideals where they can be used and for smart utilities could be for uh, connect, connecting up long distance uh, systems far away from where they where they where, they, where, they, where their head office is. May need uh, low latency uh, non line of sight type act connectivity. Uh, maybe a machine to machine cap capacity capability or even a video support for safety or for safety or security. That's all for me right now, and I was going to pass this over to Steve Atkins, who's going to talk about City of Albany, where he used Redline in his in his solution. Steve's all yours. All righty, can everybody hear me? Okay. Chris, can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Do you want me to stop sharing? You're going to share? Uh, no. You. Can, I don't have anything to share. I'm currently actually on the road, so. I'm somewhat limited. I actually pulled over to, to go ahead and take care of this. So, um, okay. I, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and go forward using your slideshow. It allows us to kind of talk back and forth as we see fit. So, sure. Okay. Uh, so, I'll move it into here. You can start talking about City of Albany. All right. So, City of Albany, New York, um, this is the capital of uh, New York State, and our population's it's a little over 100,000 right now. You know, it's been around for quite a while, 400 years plus. Um, it's kind of somewhat centrally located in New York State. It's uh, it's on the eastern border along the Hudson River. Um, pretty quick access to places like New York City, which is about an hour and a half to the south. Boston, about two hours to the east. Montreal, give or take three hours or so to the north, depending on border crossing times. Go ahead, Chris. Um, one of the big uh, things that we had going on about four or five years ago was the uh, the need for the city to modernize their traffic management system. They have uh, 305 intersections that did not have any fiber optics um, of of any nature. They only had roughly about 50 to 60 or so on fiber, um, and they came along with a project, and uh, actually it was a combination of two to three projects. They lumped them all into one big project, took care of three corridors, and simultaneously decided to bring communications into the mix. Uh, originally, fiber optics was the preferred communication method. However, due to the extreme cost and wide deployment area, it was far too cost prohibitive. So a wireless solution was picked, and that wireless solution was Redline. Uh, here, let me um, start. My apologies for not starting the video. Um, the project's uh, engineering design project probably took good, good three to four years between you know going from fiber and choosing wireless and which wireless system to to choose. Um, the city was extremely interested in, in good solid comms to be able to bring not just traffic data, which is you know. Uh, small packets, but very, very, low, you know, high volume of packets, but also video, which is kind of uh, the worst of both worlds, I guess. Um, and they wanted a wireless solution that was not of your traditional 802.11 Wi-Fi radios, which are widely deployed around, uh, you know, pretty much everywhere. They wanted something a little more proprietary RF wireless radios that were going to be 
very good, very solid. Um, so the project kicked off around 20, uh, 2014. Um, the updated traffic system was going to be uh, grid smart and redline deployments, which uh, started around June 6, 2016. Started using grid smart as our primary detection system and redline was obviously chosen as the wireless connection system. The RDL 3000 Connect OWER radios were, were what was chosen. Um, let's see, multiple RDL 3000 and 3000 XP point to multi point radios were deployed at the top of three buildings um, around, uh, somewhat centrally located around Albany. Albany's a kind of a longer city. It's not very tall north to south, but it's long east to west. And uh, the challenge was a lot of obstruction. So three tower sites were chosen. Uh, the one that you can see on the right here was actually the middle tower, was like the bottom of the triangle. Yep, and uh, you can see there's two dishes uh, towards the bottom of the Roan 25G radio tower. And then up towards the top, there are three uh, sector controller radios. So the, the three at the top, those are what's picking up the intersections in the area, um, roughly two mile range in that area going down to the, the one there, Chris was pointing out the intersection. The two dishes are used for backhaul purposes to bring all three tower sites together and connect them up to fiber. So in that image on the right, you can see the two dishes. The dish on the left is actually pointing back to the Alfred E. Smith building, which is approximately 50 plus stories tall. Um, and the other dish, which is on the right, pointing to the left is picking up the third tower. So we're using Redline not only to backhaul, all of these tower sites, but we're also using Redline to communicate out to our intersections. Uh, small RDL 3000 XP point to multi-point radios deployed in areas not reachable by base stations. We did have uh, some serious occlusions based on buildings, I, just line of sight, non-line of sight. I mean, it was just, it was a dead zone. So what we did is we deployed small little networks to pick up um, between, anywhere between three and at one point probably 15 to 20 locations to bring them back to a site that had much better communication back to a base station. So in this case, you can actually see the, the, the picture on the right is actually the, a location that does have great line of sight and good coverage back to a base station. The picture on the left is one of those that's further up the road that we're picking up. In this section of the network, we're actually bringing back, I believe, four client locations. And um, go ahead, Chris. Sure. Oh, blank, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have it, sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right, my apologies. Um, so in short, the, the system has been running for well over a year now. We've had zero outages, zero downtime, zero outages. Um, one of the big things that the city of Albany has noticed from it besides outages is the fact that it, 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 it's there. They don't have any complaints. There's no issues. It just, it just works. It runs. We don't have packets coming up missing. We're pulling grid smart. We have over 20 sites in Albany that we can pull up simultaneously and bring a uh, video back on while we're also using um, Transparity's TMS software to bring back all of our traffic signals, running adaptive. Um, like I said, the vast majority of these are actually running over wireless equipment provided by Redline. Um, we currently have about 105 to 110 intersections with communications and well over 75% of them are Redline wireless connected. You can see some various deployments here um, in and around the city of Albany. Most of them are the smaller 3.5 to 4 inch uh, radios, which are the slightly smaller um, and they have um, basically their, their beam that comes out of the radio is so I think 19 degree and um, it's got a, a pretty decent, you know, wide angle compared to the much larger panel that you saw on one of the previous slides where it's a much narrower beam. Um, we've actually switched over to using the XP style radio for all of our locations um, because we do have, you know, pretty decent line of sight for the most part in, in most instances. 
the narrow the beam width is important because it helps manage interference typically and it also with a higher gain it can help with uh, longer range absolutely and some of our ranges are well out over uh, six miles at one point right chris out to the end of central avenue route five right. that was the city we're actually shooting past two or three of the towers where they have um you know pretty good obstruction and we're shooting to the farthest tower away so um, so overall, the city's very satisfied with the radio platform. Bill Trudeau, who's the city coordinator of traffic engineering, said the RDL 3000 is working as good as our fiber. We really can't tell the difference uh, for many of our devices that are on fiber compared to the IT, ITS devices on the Redline's RDL 3000 platform. I mean, they just, it, there's no difference at all. And I, I think that says a lot. I mean, on the side of the box, when you, when you get a piece of Redline gear, it says virtual fiber on it. And you know, everybody hears these, they have these gimmicks and these names, but this is one that actually means something, you know, because it, it, it's proof, you know, proof is in the pudding and, and when you deploy this. So um, I know wireless solutions and wireless communications is a big problem in the ITS industry, primarily because of the use of the 802.11 Wi-Fi type radios. Um, and... You know, I was becoming a less and less a believer in, in wireless for wide area networks like this. And the the idea that, that the project came to fruition and, and Redline kind of fell in our lap in a way has made me a believer again in wireless. Uh, we decided that we are no longer going to be pushing any of, you know, inside our territory in New York State. We're no longer going to be using any more 802.11 Wi-Fi style radio equipment anymore. It's going to be strictly... Redline wireless, and we can do a lot more than we could have ever imagined doing wirelessly as far as communication goes. Yeah, just to add to that, Steve, the basically the techno the protocol we use on these radios is 802.16 proprietary. The big difference between 802.16 proprietary and 802.11 is 802.16 is connection oriented where 802.11 is connectionless. So a way Wi-Fi operates, it tends to listen before it transmits, especially if there's interference. Where 802.16 type systems just transmit. So a lot of times you can get a lot of contention in high RF noise environments, where with, when you run an 802.16 network, the only thing that it really affects is maybe your range. So let me ask you a question, Steve. What's the next steps for City of Albany, do you know? Uh, so the next step for City of Albany are to carry on with coverage across the city. You figure we're at 105 intersections. They have about 305, so we're at one-third capacity. So so going forward, every intersection that's being rebuilt or touched in any way is going to be outfitted with Redline Communication to bring them back into their central system. Um, I mean, that is just mm-hmm. it's going to happen no matter what. Um, in fact, the, 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 the locations around that area and in the region have really started to pick up on the fact that the, the success of the wireless technology, that it, it's going to start being utilized elsewhere with the New York State DOT. I think um, other cities that we've got extreme interest in using it. Um, so, you know, the, the next step is just continue the deployment. You know, they've, they've put the infrastructure in place for covering the vast majority, if not all, the city. And now it's just a matter of deploying the intersections equipment as as they see fit. I mean, we currently have a project right now with, I believe, 10 intersections um, in the city of Albany that are adding more red line equipment to it. Uh, they also have a project they want to, uh, to, to bring down the pipe here soon, where it's strictly just getting communications to the cabinet and they're not even going to be upgrading the intersections because they were done, you know, 10 years ago or so. So, you know, the, the, the red line equipment has really opened the door for a lot better communications and especially at a much cheaper, much, much cheaper uh, rate than, than fiber optic connectivity. And, and even some of the competing products, some of the competing 802.11 Wi-Fi products, we've noticed that the price is actually, come down considerably and is a lot better now that the commercial um, side of, of the product line is available. Uh, so you mentioned with the grid smart, so you mentioned that you, you're, they're pulling video surveillance from the, I, I believe from the grid smart system, if I'm correct. 
or correct yeah, me that's wrong. Correct. And, and it's motion JPEG, so it's even a bit more of a data hog. So, and what and what about uh, is there any other applications that the city may be considering using uh, the the network with? Oh, so currently they're looking at uh, anywhere that their wireless had been deployed prior to Redline's tenure within the city um, to to rip out a few pieces of equipment that they do have. They've got roughly 20 intersections with traditional Wi-Fi radio that have uh, their heavy surveillance um, cameras, uh, you know, megapixel IP cameras along uh, certain corridors that they've had uh, very bad experience, very poor latency. We actually did a test. Uh, we, we pulled out a Wi-Fi radio stuck in a red line radio and looked at the before and the after of the video, and it was a tremendous difference. They were, um, they, it, was, it was roughly six intersections worth of data and video cameras. Um, each, each intersection had a surveillance camera, um, PTZ, three megapixel plus, you know, full HD cameras. And it, you had a hard time just pulling one camera, let alone all six. When we temporarily put the red line equipment in for a test, we were able to pull all six radios, or all six cameras simultaneously at higher multicast rate, you know, with a much higher quality rate than what we were previously barely getting with just one camera. So that, uh, that section, that corridor is actually slated for replacement of, of their wireless equipment that's currently there with the new red line equipment. Yeah, I can attribute that to uh, the, Red, the RDL 3000s are purposely built for video surveillance. We're actually designed to carry that. That's why you're able to do that. Plus, with the high processing power, we can move those packets and those real-time packets very quickly. So that's why you're able to do what you're able to do there. Yeah. One thing I definitely want to touch on, I, I'm not sure I didn't look too closely at the slides going forward. Do we, do we touch on ease of, of installation and, and use? or? Well, I, as a vendor, mention it, but by all means. Okay, so well, one thing I definitely, like I said, you know, wireless is a big problem in the traffic and, and transportation industry because there's, you don't get a lot of help from the IT departments. Usually it's up to the distributor or the customer itself, the actual person in the traffic industry or, you know, in charge of the city's traffic signals. So you're kind of out there kind of doing it yourself, kind of a DIY network wireless deployment. Redline equipment is extremely easy to deploy. It is a PoE device. So a Cat5 cable, shielded piece of Cat5 cable up to the top. Uh, PoE injector in your cabinet. As far as configurations, it's, it's all web-based configuration. Very easy, but very, very powerful radio. I, I don't want to, you know, make, sometimes easier means less powerful or less, uh, you know, capable. But that is by no means... Um, the, 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 the idea with this, uh, it, it's easy to deploy and a lot of a, a lot of built in things um, such as preparing for your network uh, or preparing for a wireless deployment uh, with Redline equipment is, is very impressive. There's a spectrum sweep that you can actually run. You can take a radio out to a site location, plug it in, uh, log into the lap or the uh, radio with your laptop and run a spectrum sweep and not only is it going to scan your frequency range from start to finish of what you want but you can also set um you know how wide of a scan you can set it to you know scan every single hertz or every half hertz or every five megahertz or you can scan very very detailed and also the number of acquisitions per um frequency band or frequency range that you're actually selected you can increase or decrease that to speed up the process or slow down. A lot of times I'll go out there, I'll look at the entire frequency range, which we're either, that we're targeting, whether it's licensed or unlicensed, and then I'll see some aberrations, and then I will rescan a specific area, much more detailed, save the information, make my decisions based on, on that data. So um, alignment tools are very, very awesome. You can actually see there's an on-screen alignment tool, but as well as a beeper that you can turn on in the radio. So as you're aligning the radio, you got a electrician up on top of the, the bucket. They can move it around and hear the, the beeping noises speed up or slow down. So I said we've had tremendous success. We deployed 105 radios on a matter of what, about three or four weeks, Chris? I, I had you out there in the middle of the winter with me for the last few, but yeah, <laughs> a team of, of two to three people, that was it. So You also 
this is you you've done a lot with the rdl 3000 but you've also had the experience with the rdl 3100 which is our newest uh, virtual fiber radio do you uh, do you have any uh, comments on that particular form factor yeah so the the rdl 3100 is just basically kind of like um going from os9 to os10 it's it's the next evolution in in hardware it's got a faster processor it does have a a gigabit ethernet interface um so it's a physical upgrade. I mean, the RDL 31 or 3000s are still our primary radio. Uh, the 3100 was a deployment for uh, in a commercial application. Um, nothing to do with traffic or transportation. Um, it was actually for the shop vac corporation, the the people that make the shop vacs in uh, Binghamton, New York, who actually brought their buildings together. Uh, they had separate manufacturing facilities and shipping facilities within a two mile range. And they needed to be attached network wise. So. Um, it was a great radio. We uh, we didn't use anything integrated. It was um, strictly uh, an, a radio with an external radome antenna. Um, just as good, if not better, than the RDL 3000. Excellent. Okay, Steve, uh, I do appreciate your your input here. I'm going to go just to a couple more slides here, and then we'll be we'll be done the presentation and be open for questions. Um, just to say here, basically our Redline services. As Steve can contest, we have we have different services within our company. We can do consulting, um, based that's why I came out to help him make some informed decisions on his deployment. We can actually do design, although any signal didn't use our design service, we we can offer that. Our support that's uh, as any signal knows our support and knows how how well that works, and we can help plan deployments. Basically, these services are not mandatory. They are sort of fitted in where the partner or the end user wants to use. Finally, our ethics are we, want, we like to be a trusted advisor. We like to be able to help guide our clients to do, build the best networks they possibly can build. We, we, are, we, want, we are an industrial leader our, with our technology, our innovation, and our standard focus. Um, we're customer friendly. We have open documentation, we listen to our client, we fix issues, and we try to add features as required, making us a customer-centric type solution. So that's really for, uh, it's all for us, for Steve and myself, and if, I just wonder if there's any questions at this moment. At this time, I see no questions. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's very quiet. So if that's all there is, uh, thank you very much for listening, folks, and have a great day. Oh. There you go, Chris. There's one.